TM. <laughs> well, hi everyone. I'm just going to play a long play game. I'm actually already started one here. Uh, I'm playing someone a little bit more lower rated, and we're now actually using the Psycho Cowboy account. So I'm going to try to get myself up on the Psycho Cowboy account here. And um, an opening I thought I'd share with you is the King's Indian Attack. And this is something that Bobby Fischer used to play where he goes G3, Bishop G2, D3, E4, and, and play like this. So um, we're gonna give this a go here. So this is a system I, I, I was planning to do a little lesson on for you at some stage and to, and to share with you what, what this setup, because I think it's actually a very attractive setup if you don't like all the other openings that uh, I've sort of gone over and, and, and done in the past. And the good thing about this setup is you can play the same kind of things against everything. I always try to break down an opening into various stages. So actually I will do a, a video on this afterwards to teach you about this opening. The more openings you can learn in a simple way, the better. And anything that Bobby Fischer played, I think has to be treated with respect. And like I mentioned, it's like the Kings in defense, but you, um, you play it reverse for the extra tempo. So the way Bobby Fischer always used to play it was this is sort of one stage of the setup and the other stage is the Fianchetto and Castle and we're going to call that stage one. So you can pretty much do this against every sort of setup that Black plays. My opponent here is playing the uh, an opening I play which is like the, the well, hippo kind of thing, the, the hippopotamus, the hedgehog, where he's going to try to go G6 and Bishop G7. So um, so we've done stage one, and obviously our opponent's kind of ignoring what we're doing here. So I, I, I'm going to think of now strategies to work against his strategies. And one thing I found that's a very useful strategy against this is to try to sort of attack with the wing pawns. So you can try to come down with the wing pawns to cause a little bit of trouble. And I often do this against the Fianchetto setup. So I'm going to go a4 just to see how he's going to defend against this. And the idea is to go a5 and just to try to cause a little bit of problems to this position here. Because the one thing about the hippo setup that my opponent's played, it is very solid. And now he's played this move to stop me playing that one. And his idea now is to get the bishop to g7. So the next thing I'm thinking is to do that, he's going to have to move his g pawn. The only piece I don't have developed is my bishop. So now by playing b3 my bishop on b2 will look very nice there and i'm going to put it there immediately uh, because he's gone g5 and again the setup my opponent's playing is actually you've probably seen me do this myself it's not a bad setup at all because it is actually very solid but because he's played in this particular way and he hasn't castled it's it's very hard for white to break through but one thing that often happens in the king's indian attack setup is you try to play this f4 move and it, it, another reason I thought I'd show this opening is because it links in a little bit to the Botvinnik English this this big course and chess I brought out and what I mean by that is the only difference really is you've got not a pawn on c4 and you've got this knight on f3 so some of the plans are quite similar so here I'm going to try to pick up those things I've learned from that course and I'm going to actually try to play for maybe some idea with f4 but if I play it here my opponent's quite well positioned to to come down the g-file so maybe we won't do it quite yet there's no rush here um i could go d4 but then bishop g7 and i want to keep that diagonal open ideally i want to play this move f4 but i don't want to take my g-pawn because then i'll come under attack here you know what i'm going to do i'm just going to move my king because one thing with a hippo this setup that black has it's very good at adapting to certain white moves white moves but if white doesn't do anything it loses a lot of its power and i'm actually hoping my opponent plays that one and i think this is a slight mistake because i kind of feel this exchange helps me in some way and when i mean helping that bishop's quite a good defender and now i can try to take advantage of that by hitting some pawns that are now a little bit harder for my opponent to defend so bringing my queen in here now that he's swapped off that bishop He's got a little bit of a weakness here. Okay, he's going to go knight f6 next. But only now that I've got my king off the g file and his rooks off the g file, this file here, uh, is it possible for me to play f4? I can play this anyway, but I think it works a lot better now. And 
Okay, knight f6 I'm kind of expecting when my queen can even come back to e2. And I'm going to try to use these pawns to break open a position. He's going to have to try and castle queenside. So if I was black, I'd be going knight f6, queen e7 castles. But maybe I can get this f5 break in. This kind of break that um, we've seen I've used uh, in, in other situations. So, for example, in the English opening, again, this f5 break. So it's funny, one thing you'll learn with chess is... I always say stick to one opening for a long period of time. But by learning little bits of other openings, even if you don't play them, it can be a good thing because you can incorporate the middle game ideas that you see in those positions into your openings. So let's say you played the Kings in attack, but you learnt the English. You can incorporate ideas in the English, like using your F-pawn as an attacking pawn into other openings to, to you know, you can, you can adapt. And that's a great way to improve. Now my opponent has opened up the king side, but now that I've got my king hit here and his rook's actually quite badly placed here, he could be he could be actually the side who's going to suffer for this. Um, maybe he will try to exchange queens off the board. That that might be you know a, a safer option for him to do here. When I probably will exchange queens off. I mean I think that's actually probably quite a good option that he plays here because. You've got to think whose queen is is in a more risky position, and it strikes me that his queen is definitely much riskier than mine. So where do I place my queen now? Well, I think it's either a mix-up between centralizing or keeping some pressure on this area of the board. And to me, because f5 is the main break I want to play, and f5 will put pressure on e6, I want to keep pressure on e6. So I'm going to move my queen to h3, where it seems very safe. There's no ways that black's knights can attack it and the point is when i play f5 i'm going to be threatening to open it up by capturing on e6 had i moved it back to e2 had i gone f5 he can move his knight like e5 and then if i take on e6 he can take back and in this position if that happens of course i come in so now you can see how my f pawn has been used as, as a very dangerous sort of lever in this position so yeah so we're going to build up the cowboys long play um rating and the Cowboys blitz rating but with the long play I want to kind of give you more positional ideas and what I thought might be good with the long play is to mainly um, try out some new openings I haven't tried and combine that with some lessons on the opening so you can learn bits about these new openings the Kings Indian attack is going to be the Cowboys long play opening he's going to keep the crazy gambits for, for other uh, other times Okay, well, right. Well, here my opponent is now ready to castle when I feel he'd be doing absolutely fine. So there's no time like the presence to play f5. Now, if he takes on f5, my queen again is well positioned because it can come in and threaten the knight. And my main aim here is really to not make any weaknesses in my structure. Everything's nicely defended and try to stop my opponent from castling. Uh, at the same time so this is sort of the main thing I'm trying to do and if I can open up this diagonal it will make it hard for him to castle we'll have to move his bishop back something like that but then his bishop will get in the way of the king and I can maybe start moving my pieces to better squares this knight is very bad I might want to try to move it around like this get it into a better square this knight can even try to come around like this but the main thing I'm thinking of as well as well as these ideas is the pressure on the f file uh, I want to try to keep this alive. So let's think about the likely options here. And I'm not even calculating that deeply today. You, I don't always calculate that deeply. You don't need to play a good game of chess. You don't need to calculate deeply to play a good game of chess. Um, okay, so he's gone here. So he still wants to keep this barrier so he can castle. Now, the next thing I was thinking of doing here was something like taking, taking, and then maybe getting a knight then to d4 so i'm just going to calculate takes takes knight f3 castles knight d4 and e6 is very weak then but can he defend it well he can go rook e8 and unfortunately i can't draw arrows at the moment so i'm going to try to keep this very simple because i haven't put the arrow function on maybe i can do that now should we see if we can do that uh I probably can uh, inside in a da, 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 show legal moves. Let's have a look. Can we add arrows? Uh, right button. Oh, yes, we can. Good. Okay. Well, that's cool. 
Okay, so that's much better. Okay, my videos will improve here on in. <laughs> so I'm thinking takes, takes, knight here, castles, knight here, rookie eight, and he's defending this one. And I, I don't see how that's going to help me actually. So what I'm actually thinking of doing now is to play queen h4, because if he castles then I can take on e6 and his knight's on pre. And I'm, again, I'm trying to cause him problems before he castles. But if I go here, maybe he will go knight to g4. But then I can go f6. He has to move his queen. Is his knight in trouble here? It has this square here, but maybe it's also in a little bit of trouble. So I kind of, I kind of like. Okay, the other idea is to take here first and then play queen to h4. Because then if his knight moves, I can come into h5 with check. But he will have the f7 square. So takes, takes, queen h4, trying to use tempo to stop him castling, rook f7. Now I can take on h6, but it's very risky to open that line towards my king. So takes, takes, queen... I, I think I'm going to go here first. This seems like the move that causes him the most trouble. Now he might be alright if he plays this move. This, this seems like his most active move with the knight trying to get in here. This could be a good option for him, but at least it does stop him castling. And I, I don't think I'm damaging my position that much. Even if he gets his knight in there, which I'm going to try to stop, it's not the end of the world for me. And after knight here, I can play f6. He has to move his queen, and then I can play d4. And if this knight is kicked away, I will win that knight there. So I'm only now calculating. I'm not even basing this move on much calculation. So he's moved his other knight there, but... Now, a problem he could surely have is if I take and then try to kick this knight away. Because if this knight moves, then f6 will be weak. So I'm using basic calculations here. And I'm going to take on e6 now. Because I want to open up my rook, first of all. And now the threat is to go h3. I'm going to try to move this knight away. And then I'm going to try to take here. And obviously, if he does something else here, I'm still threatening h3. Now, funnily enough, he might be able to meet h3 with a crazy move, h5. That would be very interesting, because then if I take, he goes pawn takes, and he actually wins my queen in some really weird pin. So I don't know if that's what he's got planned, but that'd be, that's quite a hard move to see. And I don't, again, I'm not really weakening my position. My f pawn's not doing anything anymore. And at least this way, I'm increasing that pressure, and I'm increasing the tension before he gets a chance to get his king castled. Another thing I could do, <coughs> excuse me, is to think about putting the bishop here. Because then if he goes h5, I take here, and if he takes with his h pawn, I've got a pawn on h2 still, so my queen is free to move because it's not pinned to my king. So the problem if I go h3 is if he goes h5, takes, takes, he's pinning my queen to my king. But if I move the bishop here and anything happens my queen can move so actually bishop h3 i believe is quite an annoying threat for him maybe he should just castle here something like this but of course if he if he castles i've won kind of a free pawn in the position so if he does castle i can also con still continue with bishop h3 and his knights are actually i can't remember the the, the right word uh, maybe you guys can remember it in the chat and and type it in in the comments but uh, Jonathan Brownson talks about these knights which kind of share squares. What what did he call them? I really can't remember. It's not oscillating. But two knights like this can be very bad because they're fighting for the same square. Okay, so now um, h3 nearly wins a piece because if he has to move his knight, I take there. Okay, he can get a rook in exchange for it, but that's not good enough. But if I play here, he will play h5. Now, if I take there, he will take here. And if I take there, he takes here with check. So here, h5, takes, takes. He's kind of just about. I can go here, h5, and there's some weird move, like king g1. And then if he moves that knight, I take here. If he doesn't move the knight, I'm going to take here. He takes back, I take there. So I feel like he's overloaded these squares, and h3 is working. Other good moves here. I'm still thinking about getting my knight into the game. That would be a lovely square, but this is more positional. If you have a chance to win the game immediately, then you, then you should go for it. So by playing h3, and now he is going for this tactic, but I'm just going to step my king off that diagonal, 
and his only idea now would be to try to get his queen to one of these two squares but I don't think it's going to work because my queen can always come back to f2 after I take on g4 if he castles I take here and okay so he's oh he's attacking my rook I didn't see that there you go you're going to miss some stuff but and he is uh, this, and he is actually if I take there he is coming to g2 but I've got f2 okay I don't believe it I'm going to take here anyway and the thing is I'm going to at least win his knight if he takes my rook I've got two pieces for the rook then which is, is much better than a rook two pieces generally much better than a rook so this was a good move from my opponent but I still believe the tactics are working out in my favor pawn takes here queen takes here check king f2 I'm not worried my king is very safe here he's only got his queen attacking I've taken all his pieces if he takes with his knight here well then I've got to move to do something he's not threatening check my queen's covering it so I might just be able to move my rook or even move my knight so that rook protects it if he takes my rook probably his best bet well then I can take this one worst case scenario and I will have two knights two knights for his rook and pawn uh, and I always like the two minor pieces and I, I also think that in the position I'm going to get his bishop is bad and I, I, I have a nice nice edge there so this all seems I don't know what he's going to play at this moment in time he hasn't used his his, his time his clock very well it has to be said he, he's he's not maximized the potential of of his time uh in the position but uh anything else he can do well he can throw this check in but then queen f2 is is okay now then maybe he should take on this square because that would then force me to go queen takes queen because i suppose if he goes queen takes rook here do i have any other options i could take there with a rook but i think i want to exchange the queens off in actual fact because there is a little bit of danger uh, on the h file uh, to to my king if i'm not if i'm not paying uh, full attention so so i expect we're going to get a position where he goes queen takes a1 and i will take the knight on f6 yeah so the idea what, what i'm going to really do with this long play thing on the psycho cowboy uh, uh, thing is, is to play these longer limits in certain openings do a lesson on these openings in another youtube video so you get a broader um a broader array of openings that you can play and this opening the king's in an attack is another opening which i've always been quite interested in but i haven't played that much because it really is the influence of bobby fisher and um a lot of bobby fisher's games really amplify um some of the main ideas in the king's indian attack which is which is a lot of fun it's a very fun opening to to try out and very easy to learn well my opponent's having a, a very long think here which is probably the wrong time to have a long think uh, at, at this moment in time because he should have thought about this before he went into this position having a long think now doesn't doesn't make a lot of sense to me um, I mean you should think before it gets complicated but his position the way he put his knights didn't seem to be working very well did it and let's just okay so i think this is going to be the only thing he can do and then he's going to have queen takes queen rook takes and then he probably has to take here to get a pawn for it and i've got to think there where where i'm going to move my knights to but the thing about this position is they can jump about very nicely i think i can do something like knight here knight here try to take this pawn this one is a little bit annoying this knight so I might have to move my C pawn and then move this this way or move my D pawn and move the knight to D3 maybe that's a more attractive idea so I'm thinking if the queens come off I'm going to go for some setup the problem with moving my D pawn it does increase his bishop his bishop becomes better but I think as long as I keep my bishop on G2 I'm not worried so I think I will try to set up with knight D3 knight C4 trying to edge those pieces forwards and then the knights can hopefully sort of try to come into these squares eventually this is where i want to get my knights eventually you know a knight here a knight here something like that and uh that looks that looks very pleasant for me if i if i get that kind of setup uh in the position so oh. so we'll wait and see my opponent having a bloody long think isn't he a long long think here um so yeah, I mean, let's have a look at the opening again, just what he thinks. So basically stage one of this opening, which I will do my next lesson on, is to go knight f3, 
G3. I mean, you can do this by playing E4 first. There's kind of two stages to the setup. One setup is to put the knight here and Fianchetto. You could say it's a little bit like Loretti, but the difference is, is how you place these pawns. And you place these pawns ideally on E4 and D3. This is what makes it, I say, the King's Indian attack. So stage one is you either go, you can either do E4 first. You can go E4 first and play it like that. But stage two generally is knight to f3, g3, bishop g2, castles, combined with d3, e4, knight to d2. And there is quite a big distinction, you could say, between, and let me just show you, I mean, you can play this against most things. So here I played e4, and I got the two stages in, in different orders. And it's a very sort of compact position, this, this stage one. And only now do you often have to think about what to play next. And um, okay, so he, he's given me a check here. I thought he would do this because it forces me to move my queen here. Um, because otherwise, if it had taken the rook straight away, um, I have I had another option of rook takes f6. But now, uh, when he takes my rook, I have to play queen takes. There's nothing going on where I can trap his queen, is there? After that, no. I'm just going to go over this plan that we've already discussed. So. Yeah, with that set up, I was saying, uh, one thing I find very interesting, which people I don't think have ever really talked about before, is the difference between um, openings and systems. Um, so what I mean by that is, um, you could say the London system is a system. Let me just think about this position now. Has he got any, I mean, the, good, the other good thing about this position, which I kind of think worked out quite quickly, is that my opponent doesn't really have any activity. My bishop stops any rook ever coming down to h1. His g pawn is more of a weakness. He hasn't got a pawn break. He can't move this pawn. So he hasn't got any activity. So that's why I've got time to maneuver. And now I'm thinking the, the most sensible maneuver is first, that my knights are very bad. My rook is good. My bishop is okay. So my knights should move. So I'm thinking now moving the knight to this square is best to attack that pawn. So we'll start, we'll start that operation just improving my pieces first of all so what i mean by that systems like the london system maybe like the botfinic system even uh systems are, are sort of okay i move my rook back and i may as well attack a pawn are systems that you set up with and you can do them pretty much whatever your opponent plays you do adapt at some stage but your first sort of eight moves or so are generally the same uh, so it's a system you're playing, the London system you set up in the same way. Um, the uh, This King's Indian defense system you generally set up in the same way. And these kind of systems are, are okay, now I'm going to continue with my maneuver, are very good for players who don't want to spend all their time analyzing. And I go on about this. Who wants to spend 20 hours on something when they can spend one hour on something and get the same results? Well, I'd always want to spend the one hour so I can go down the pub or something with the other with the other nineteen hours. Maybe I should actually learn twenty hour things. It would be better for my health. Um, but the point is, these systems. If you haven't got a lot of time, let's say you're a, an adult, you've got kids, you've got family, you don't want to learn like that. If you go, for example, let's say one e four or on move one. Let's just you know, I don't know if I can move it. You have to learn how to play against the Sicilian against the alakine against so many you have to adapt so you can't play the same moves generally against everything you can try doing the king's indian attack with that which is one thing we're looking at here but generally you know if you're going for these bigger openings you have to learn 10 times as much that is the difference between systems and openings work out how much time you have what you want to do and learn accordingly i think it's very important not everyone has hours and hours to spend you know keeping up to date with all the latest things i certainly don't want to do that even though i'm a professional chess player why on earth do i want to spend like that much time just oh you know learning what was the latest theory that happened in norway uh, oh i have to look at the latest theory because if i don't someone's going to play against me and i lose no i don't want to bloody do that i, I want to be like no i don't care what happens i'm going to play my same old stuff and beat you anyway woohoo Good thing you didn't see the fingers there. Okay, right, now back to the game. Now this is the only way he had defending this pawn, but this pawn I will win eventually. I'm pretty sure about that. Again, I'm not worried about this H file at all because my bishop stops everything. 
His only chance would be to swap that off, but it's just not going to happen. There's no queens on the board, so he's, queen, he's got nothing going on the H file. Now, my knight's very well placed here. It stops any of these pawn breaks. I don't see the point in moving it on. My rook is okay. It's this guy here. Now, I was thinking about, as you remember early on, bringing it over here, but now he's let free of this square. It makes much more sense to immediately bring it out, and later on, I can put it somewhere like F5. This is one idea. I might even put it on b5 at the right time. Uh, but f5 looks like the square. The only thing is I can't put both knights on this great square. But I can certainly put one of them on that square. And I think this knight is heading towards that square immediately. And then combined with this knight, I'm going to you know, win this pawn minimum. Uh, but I think... I, I want to, what do we do there? I want to keep this knight here because this is my better knight. Because later on, that looks like a lovely square. If he ever tries this bishop e, c8 move, my knight can dive in there. It might even go there now, but of course, that does give him the extra option of capturing. So he has gone bishop c8, but now this square is allowing my knight in here. He doesn't really have any threats. He has to get rid of the bishops. He has to get doubled up on this file, and he has to come down. It takes him too long. And with this move, you can see that the f6 square is a what we call in the business a major, major, major family, family, big family, lots of family, Catholic family fork. That's what we call it. It's not a small family, it's a Catholic family fork. Catholic, I just came up with that, I'm quite impressed with that. How do I come up with so much verbal diarrhea in the space of a sentence i don't know that is a calf i like it catholic family fork because it ain't just attacking a couple of mouths it's attacking numerous mouths oh i like it that's what i'm most proud about in the whole day so yeah the knight is heading into this square and um i, I think he can't stop that i'm winning more material but his position to be frank um was horrible does anyone, does anyone, is anyone Danish who watched my channel? I don't know if I have any Danish watchers out there. But my favourite TV series of all time, which I've just re-watched, is this Danish programme called Clown. Does anyone know Clown? Oh, it's absolutely brilliant. I have to say that and Peep Show, which is not what you think. Peep Show, if you get a chance to watch Peep Show, it's the best comedy show in the world re-watching that now English show but Clown which has Frank and oh what's it Casper Frank and Casper Danish guys I watch it in subtitles but so it's somehow just so it's funny yet so soothing check it out Clown good little suggestion from Denmark there um, um, my girlfriend told me about it this clown thing and uh, yeah it's pretty damn I just it's so good but I've seen it twice now can I what I've never really I can't I can just about watch things two times but when it comes to watching it a third time, I'm like, oh, I don't know, there is a limit. What have I watched three times? I've watched Braveheart, because that's bloody excellent. I've watched um, probably uh, Gladiator. I like a bit of Gladiator. And maybe The Last Samurai. You can see the kind of films I'm going for here. Braveheart, probably my favourite film. Maybe Heat, a bit of Robert De Niro and Pacino. I was always on Robert De Niro's side. You know, willing him, willing him on to rob that bank. Don't know why. Bit wrong. But yeah, anyway, uh, onto the position. So my opponent is thinking here, but he's under two minutes now. It went wrong. He didn't calculate at the right time. He's not used his time correctly. Another thing, I if you want to get better at chess, play more this time limit, guys. Blitz chess is more fun, but if you want to get better, try the 15 plus 10 second time limit. It's so much better for your chess, honestly. You'll learn a lot more when you can actually think about the position. But if you do do that, do 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 do, which are extinct now, the do do, that animal, the do do, do 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 do. If if you do if you do play this time limit, you've got to use your time properly because let's go back. It got really critical this position when I started to play f5, right? And I can play these ideas relatively risk free because I'm playing this move. My king is quite safe now. His piece is misplaced. But after I go queen h4, my opponent has a lot of risk to his position because I'm the one who's creating threats. If he can't castle, he'd be in trouble. But also, by playing a move like this, which he played very quickly, his knights are sharing squares and they're only relying on each other for protection. And that, 
is not particularly a good scenario to be in. They they need to, you know, they can easily drop as they did in the game. Okay, my opponent's played here. We're finishing him off quickly. Um, we are a piece up here and it shouldn't be too hard. He hasn't even got any threats really. Can we even get some funky... Look at that. King there, knight there, checkmate. Oh, that would have been beautiful. I haven't seen that checkmate before. Imagine if he moved the king there. Knight there would have been checkmate. Wow, that's that's really weird, right? I'd be checking his king, and all these three squares are covered by my knights. That was, I love seeing these little bit of you know, little bit of beauty in 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 positions. Okay, now there are other ways of doing it, but when you're a piece up, the best thing to do is just exchange off. So I'm going to offer him this knight. Make sure you don't blunder. If he doesn't take it, I will win that pawn. That pawn will be lost eventually. It might take me a bit of time, but it will be lost with my king coming around and uh, he, he okay so we're going to take the rook the reason I take him the rook I want to just keep control I'm going to move my king now to f3 and my idea is to go rook g4 and the reason I'm doing this is to either get rid of the rooks or do this I kept this rook here because I'm just trying to keep an eye on any pawn breaks he might want to play and my rook just keeps double protection of them also by placing the the rook on this square I stopped this pawn break so uh, okay so I, I mean that was fairly solid game um, now um, a little bit more about the opening and what I would say about the opening is I'm gonna do a proper lesson on this but it's it's quite an interesting way to play I mean Bobby Fischer always used to play of e4 and then he would against the Karakhan and the French defenses which are two main moves he would play d3 and knight d2. So he's doing it the other way around here. And then most of the time, he would then do the other stage one. Stage one, you go here. And then he would do this kind of stuff. So we'll have a look at this position, I think, in the next lesson. And the great thing about this opening is it's a system. It's very easy to play. You get nice attacking chances. Stage two, we'll talk about another time, but it generally goes e5, rook e1, and then we use Harry. So it's a nice way to play. And you can do this against a lot of things. So against the Karakhan, you can also do this. I don't think it's as effective, but it's the same kind of principle. Uh, and you can also even do it by playing the other move first, by playing this one, stopping e5 altogether. And then after d5, going g3. Now, I a lot of people say this is a reti, but I'd only say it's a reti when you play c4. And we're not doing that. We're going to try to play e4. What it is, is like a King's Indian reversed. So after some moves like this, if e6 again, you get that French defense where you prepare this move. So you go like here, and then you go knight d2 and you go e4. And if we switch the boards around, the the reason this is, okay, we're doing the same thing in the King's Indian defense, but the reason the King's Indian attack is better is that when we've done this stage one, when we're playing the defense, they can go e4. And we still do our kind of thing where we go e5, but they've already got a pawn to e4. And when we have the white pieces, it's a lot harder for them to achieve that move. So there's these little subtleties. But I think I will do a little five point lesson on that opening so you can get to grips of it and you can combine that with some of the other openings I've taught you. Anyway, the Psycho Cowboys, first winning long play. Uh, I hope, hope you got something from that video, some kind of exclamation or correct way to think. And uh, we'll move on in future uh, trying to help you develop your, your, your game more. Cheers.